Hello and welcome to a new episode of Berkthus Garden Airwaves. As indicated from the last episode, we will be talking about a, another HVA agent named Werner Stiller and continuing our Stasi series. Werner Stiller was born in August of 1947 in Westmar, Germany. In 1966, he started working, he started studying physics at the University of Leipzig. At the time, the universities were a breeding ground or a potential recruitment for Stasi agents. Because he studied physics and because the brain drain of the, GD, of the DDR, with many people leaving to go to the West Berlin and West Germany, they needed to utilize their spying apparatus to obtain technology coming from the West. In 1970, Werner Stiller was recruited by a Stasi agent, and he began he began um, some of the processes to test agents, as it must be noted, would be to escape to the West. Some of them would be to seduce a secretary to, to see about their, to, to obtain information from a secretary via seduction. This would later be used as a technique called the Romeo Spies in West Germany, where many HVA agents would be sent to West Germany to seduce high-level ranking secretaries at NATO installations to obtain very good information. It was quite successful. Stiller in 1972 was fully employed by the MFS. He became head of the science and tech sector, the SWT, and he had 11 agents under his supervision. Most of them operated at nuclear facilities in the Baltic, one particular agent, for example, operated at IBM in Munich, and another agent operated in France. Most, most of these agents, they were either sent to, most of their meeting, meeting uh, most of the meetings were actually with, with other Western delegates, were actually at, uh, or Western scientists were held at symposiums and uh, science fairs across Western Europe. Primarily, all of these operations were in the Free Republic of Germany. Around 1977, Werner attended a Stasi meeting headed by Eric Milke, and many of the party functionaries that were there or Stasi agents were, that were rewarded were actually rewarded based on ideological merit to the Soviet system and to ultimately the East German state. And this actually put a sour taste in Stiller's mouth, and he decided from then on in 1977 that he was going to defect to West Germany and he began his crusade against the Ministerium for Staatssicherheit and essentially he made contact with the BND over a series of two years he essentially gathered up m much information and compiled it over and over again compiled much information he made a hard, hard decision to actually leave his family his wife was very ideologically motivated towards the communist, towards the, the East German state. She was very persuaded by communist thinking. So he made a decision to leave his wife, his infant son, and his young daughter. He, however, started an affair with a woman named Helga, who he ultimately ended up defecting with her and her son to the West. Stiller was debriefed by the BND, and he ultimately, for his safety, was shipped off to the United States, where he was then debriefed again by the Central Intelligence Agency, who assisted him in getting a job at Goldman Sachs in New York City. He did quite well there and made quite, quite a name for himself and made quite a lump sum of money. He then was employed back to, Le he was employed in the early 90s to Lehman Brothers, in Frankfurt, head, at head of their branch in Frankfurt, Germany. He then rekindled with his wife and his biological son and daughter, and it was never quite the same. Much of the information that he gave to the, to the uh, West German Bundesnachrichtendienst, or BND, essentially exposed 20 plus agents operating in the Free Federal Republic of Germany. Even Marcus Wolf would note in his book a man without a face 
that Stiller's defection was ultimately the worst, and it absolutely slowly started to expose the system and the rot within the upper echelons of the East German state and its security apparatus. Stiller actually pr published a book, and it was published in 1986 with Jefferson Adams called Beyond the Wall, Memoirs of an East and West German Spy. He was a true double agent. This is a Cold War classic, and it also should be noted that this is something that I recommend you read to give you an insight into something that a lot of Western readers don't really have access to in English, of the Stasi, and also, in particular, the Hauptverwaltung Aufklärung, or the HVA, which was East Germany's, East Germany's espionage service. He ultimately ended up resettling in Hungary in the late 90s, and he died in December of 2016 in Hungary. Um, and he died, he was found near a river. So he died by suspicious circumstances, so to speak. So again, check this out. This is another series of Berchtesgaden Airwaves in the East German Cold War Classic. Stay tuned for a new episode next week. Dankeschön. Und auf Wiedersehen.